This is our third session on 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 7. In the first session, we jumped right to the end of the text and looked at verse 7. Think over what I say, namely, everything that's just gone before here, as well as everything else Paul writes. Think over what I say, and the reason, it says reason, because... When you think over what I say, the Lord will give you understanding. And so we made a strong case, as strong as I could make, that if you believe in the supernatural intervention of God in your life, that he gives you understanding, don't ever, ever let that keep you from being a hard thinker about biblical truth. And if you believe in hard thinking about biblical truth, don't ever let that lead you to think that you are self-reliant and that you don't need the gift of understanding in and through that. So that was the first session. The second session was, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And we ask, what kind of strength is this? How is Does grace work? What is grace and how does it produce strength? And how is grace in Christ Jesus? And that was session number two. And now we move to session number three, in which the question I have is, um, why do you need strength to do this? Or more specifically, what is it that you need to be strengthened for in this text. And so he continues, verse 2. Be strengthened by grace that is in Christ, and, and here's what you're going to do with that strength, and what you have heard, what you have heard from me, in the presence of many witnesses, and trust. Now there's the basic command, right? That's the main point of the verse. What you have heard, and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So the main answer to the question, what do you need strength for? You need strength for the work of entrusting what you've heard to faithful men. So let's let's ask, okay, why do you need supernatural strength for that? And to answer that, we probably should ask, we probably should ask, what are you entrusting? It says, what you have heard. That's the first answer. So answer number one, what you have heard from me. I have delivered to you something. What have you? What has Paul delivered to him? So I take that word in trust and I track it down and I see a form of it earlier. Here's chapter one, verses 12 to 14. I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Now Paul is the one who's not entrusting here, but is being entrusted with a message. Follow the pattern of sound words. So there's a name given to what has been entrusted to me. It's called a pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit. And that word deposit, you can't see it in English, but in Greek is related to this word in trust. But in English, it's very plain. We've got a name for it here, what has been entrusted to me, that's what I'm going to entrust. It's called a pattern of sound words, and it's called the good deposit. What else is it called? Here in Romans six seventeen and 18. Thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching. That's another name given to the body of teaching that Christians are to learn and pass along to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. So it's called standard of teaching. Here's one more. In Acts 20, 26, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of you all. Why, why is he innocent? Because I did not shrink 
from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. There's nothing in this, the totality of what summed up the counsel of God, which I take to mean something very similar to standard of teaching or the good deposit, the pattern of sound words, what has been entrusted to Paul. So this this trust that he is passing along to faithful men is a body of teaching that has a certain unity and totality to it, summing up the healthy uh, in a healthy way the teachings of the Bible. And, and before I ask the next question, notice the four generations here. Here's uh, in chapter 1, verse 12, Paul himself has been entrusted with something. So there's somebody before Paul, let's just say Jesus, who comes to Paul and says, I've got a message for you. You're going to take my word to the nation. So Jesus, second generation is Paul. And then Paul says, you, Timothy, have heard this from me. So now we've got three generations, Jesus, Paul, Timothy, and you now entrust this to faithful men. Generation four, and I said there were four, there are really five, men who will teach others also. So Jesus, Paul, Timothy, faithful men, and the ones they teach. And it comes right down, Lord willing, and thank God to us. So that's what we do. Christians embrace the healthy teaching of Scripture, and they pass it along to faithful people who pass it along generation after generation. Last question. Why do we need to be strengthened supernaturally by grace that is in Christ in order to do this? This is not strengthened with protein in some physical way. This is strengthened by grace, God's glorious commitment to us and powerful action in us because of Christ that enables us to do this. Why why do we need that? He's not saying, well, you can do this, no problem, just go about it. No, he's saying you need supernatural grace strength. And, And it seems to me that there are at least two reasons When I think of what's being taught here, this body of teaching, I think of 1 Corinthians 2.13 where it says, we impart this, this wisdom, this body of teaching, I think, in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual, the natural person, this is what we're up against, The person, as we are by our first birth, without the new birth, we're just natural, ordinary, fallen, sinful, rebellious people. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. So the things that need to be taught, they simply aren't going to accept them. For they are foolishness to him. He's not able. It's not just a will not, but it's cannot. He is so opposed to God that he is not morally able to love and embrace what's being presented. He's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So my first answer to the question, why do you need need spiritual strength to do this work of entrusting to men is because without the supernatural work of God in those men and through the teaching, there's going to be resistance. And that leads to the, the last thing that is the transition to next time. Verse 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ. So suffering seems to be baked in to this effort to entrust to faithful men. It might be something mild, like disruption of relationships when you teach the truth. Or it might be something severe, like jail or murder. We need supernatural strength by grace, in Christ, to do a faithful job of passing this along from generation to generation because natural men don't receive it and it's going to bring suffering into our lives, which leads us now next time to say, okay, 
what's that going to involve? And he says, it's going to involve being like a soldier. It's going to involve being like an athlete. And it's going to involve being like a farmer. In every one of those, there's an exhortation and a promise. And that will be very helpful to look at.